Hey guys, how's it going today? I hope this video finds you well. Uh, today we are going to talk about enzymes, all right? Um, the first thing is we're going to cover what you need to know. So what you need to know by the end of the video is you need to be able to know what an enzyme is. Also, you need to be able to know what is the, uh, oops, I kind of skipped there a little too fast. Uh, you need to know what the function of those enzymes are. Um, then you also need to know what the um, structure of an enzyme looks like and last but not least you need to know some of the things that are going to affect the way that an enzyme is going to um, function okay so just to have an essential question make sure that you write that essential question in your notes um, what is the role of enzyme but of course be sure to keep these things in mind okay uh, so just follow along with the uh, Cornell notes that you guys have today First thing is, what are enzymes? Well, enzymes are going to be proteins, okay? And proteins, as you know, there are one specific type of um, biomolecules that we have covered so far. So one specific example of a protein will be enzymes. Remember that proteins have lots and lots and lots of different um, functions, yet one of them is going to be to serve as enzymes what do they do is that they're going to act as a catalyst and a catalyst is anything um, that is going to speed up a chemical reaction so the way that it works and I'm going to talk about that on the on the next slide but well um, a catalyst will be anything that makes a reaction go a lot faster like for example if you ate um, per se I don't know a burger well when you put a burger into your stomach, your stomach is going to need the help of thousands of different enzymes in order to break down all of the biomolecules that you just put inside of your body. So your body is going to use these enzymes to pretty much speed up the process of breaking them down so that your body can actually use all of that energy, okay? Um, normally, enzymes will end in the letters ASE. So anything that ends in A's, we are going to just say that it is talking about an enzyme. So, for example, the word amylase will be an enzyme. Glucose isomerase, that will be another enzyme. Cellulase, that's an example of another enzyme as well. So, make sure that you take some notes about uh, that specific biomolecule there that enzymes is. Uh, the next picture here is uh, showing you some more examples. Well, and these enzymes, for example, lipase. Uh, it's an example of an enzyme that will break down fats or lipids, which is obviously another type of biomolecule that we have talked about. Uh, protease, this is another example of an enzyme that actually helps break down proteins inside of your stomach. Other examples like cellulase, amylase, lactase, this is a, one of those, lactase. Well, lactase is an enzyme that helps break down lactose, which is actually found in milk, okay? Uh, and that's some people that are lactose intolerant that basically means that well they don't have that enzyme inside of their body their body is unable to make that enzyme so people who are lactose intolerant that means that they do not have lactase to break it down okay and that's why it can have some issues when they drink milk uh, sucrase that's another one that helps break down sucrose and then maltase helps down, uh, helps with maltose. Okay, so these right here uh, are examples of um, some carbohydrates. Well, these, the end in A's, are gonna be enzymes, okay? Um, how do enzymes speed up chemical reactions? Well, this is the way that enzymes work. They speed up chemical reactions by lowering deactivation energy. Now, to explain to you what activation energy, you have to look at a graph like this. So normally when you have a reaction, um, whoops, sorry about that, a reaction is going to take some time to kick start or to get started. Uh, without an enzyme, that energy that the, rea the reaction requires to start is going to be a lot greater than it would be if you had an enzyme. So this line right here represents without an enzyme, notice how it's a lot taller which means that it requires a lot of energy to start. Yet with an enzyme, it requires less energy to kick start, and so the reaction can start can 
happen a lot faster. So enzymes speed up chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy, the amount of energy that is required for the reaction to occur. Okay, Let me sure that you have this down in your notes. Uh, the next thing is a question here, and this question I'm going to um, ask it. Uh, I'm going to ask you to answer it at the um, sometime in this PowerPoint. Uh, it's going to stop and it's going to ask you to answer that question. So cellular respiration involves a series of chemical reactions. Which of the following is a primary way that enzymes affect this reaction? So read the answer choices and please provide the best answer choice. Um, best one here will be uh, that they increase the rate of the reaction by decreasing the activation energy. Remember, they lower the activation energy, they re decrease the activation energy. And so that's how they uh, increase the rate of the reaction. Okay, what are three parts? Well, in your notes, make sure that you draw some of these models that I'm going to show you here and so that you have them. Uh, the first thing is, well, the enzyme, and this is just a model of the enzyme. There are thousands and thousands of different models. There's just one of them. Uh, this is just one specific example of an enzyme. Uh, the next thing that you need to know is the substrate. And the substrate is just that thing that is going to fit on top of the enzyme itself. So the, the substrate is whatever the enzyme is going to break down or change per se. The last thing is to know what the active side is. And the active side is just that specific space between the enzyme and the substrate that is going to allow the substrate to fit in. So if you look at this picture here, this is right here, this little square there, and then the little triangular space, that's going to be all what we call the active site. And that's where the substrate will fit in. Okay, so make sure that you have these parts. Um, the next thing is, well, how it is that enzymes are specific? And they kind of work like a key and a lock. Um, normally, if you have a lock that you need to open, well, you're going to need one specific key to open that lock. And enzymes work in very similar ways. Uh, they're only specific to that one um, substrate. So if you have an enzyme, per se, in this example, the key that will only be able to open one specific lock. And that's how it is similar to the lock and key model. Uh, like, for example, if you had the enzyme cellulase, well, cellulase is only going to break down cellulose. Uh, if you had lipase, well, that enzyme is going only going to break down fats or lipids inside of your stomach. So you have to understand that enzymes are only going to be specific to one uh, substrate, okay? And they're kind of like a key and a lock. We'll talk a little more about that. Uh, the next thing is that enzymes are also recyclable. Well, what does, that, what does that mean? That means that you can actually use an enzyme as many times as you want so long as the enzyme uh, is not affected by any, um, anything uh, in their surrounding, in their, in their environment. So when you have an enzyme, you can actually reuse it as many times as you want, just like the key and the lock. You have a key, you can open that lock as many times as you want, so long as you're not messing up or breaking that key. Okay, so enzymes are going to be recyclable. They're recycled every time that you use it, you can still use it again. So you have the substrate, you have the product, and you can use it again, break down another substrate into another product. Okay. Uh, there's another question. There are many different enzymes located in the cytoplasm of a single cell. How is a specific enzyme able to catalyze a specific reaction? So read the answer choices, and the video is going to stop to ask you this question. Make sure that you pick the best one. Best one here is going to be answer choice C. An enzyme binds only to a specific structure, and that goes back to the key and lock model. They're specific to one uh, type of substrate. OK, um, that is, of course, unless it becomes denatured. So enzymes can sometimes be denatured. And what that means is that they're going to lose the specific shape that they have in their active site. So if you have an enzyme that looks like this, for example, and you denature that enzyme, you change the way that it is, uh, well, that changes into something like this then the substrate is not going to fit in there anymore. And some things that can denature an enzyme 
are things like temperature. So think back to the key and lock model. If you had your key and you place that key inside of a, an, oven, an oven per se, um, then your key is going to change shape. It's not going to be able to open that lock anymore. And the same thing happens to enzyme. When you put them in uh, different conditions that are not optimum for them, well, they can be affected by that. So here where it says, um, if the enzyme is not in its optimum condition, well, optimum pretty much means best condition, okay? When, when the enzymes are not in their best conditions, that is going to damage the enzyme, okay? And we call that denatured, okay? The enzyme is denatured. All right, uh, the next thing is, what are some of these things that are going to affect or denature an enzyme? Well, temperature, if the temperature is way too high, the enzyme might be in nature or way too low that might freeze the enzyme and not be able to work. Um, so you have to make sure that the enzyme is within that optimum, optimum temperature, optimum condition. Some other things are pH. So if something is very, if your enzyme is into something very, very acidic, that might not work out for them. Well, that is going to be out of the optimum condition. So that is going to denature the enzyme. For example, some of the enzymes that you have in your stomach, they usually work at a pH of 2. So if the pH in your stomach is not a pH of 2, then your uh, enzymes are not going to be working properly. All right? And we'll practice this later in a, in a lab that we're going to do. Uh, another thing is that we also have enzyme inhibitors. And enzyme inhibitors are actually proteins that will uh, pretty much compete for the active site and they're not going to allow uh, the enzyme to do its job so it will change the shape of the enzyme and we call these inhibitors they're kind of like a, um, a little competitor that is going to come in and not allow the substrate to join with the enzyme okay the last thing is concentration of substrate well if you have way too much substrate way too much things to break down or to catalyze that might affect the um, the way that the enzyme works, okay? So if you have too much substrate, that will also uh, affect or denature an enzyme. Now, this is the last question here, question number three. So it says the graph shows the relationship between the rate of enzyme action and pH for three enzymes, pepsin, ure urease, and trypsin. And you have this graph right here, pH on the x-axis, rate of reaction of enzyme reaction on the y-axis urease is most effective at a ph of and just give me let me give you a second to think about that best answer here is b ph of seven notice how this is the line for urease this is where the enzyme is mostly active here the rate of the reaction is highest right there so if you follow that down you will see that at a pH of 7 is where urease is mostly active. If you go to pH 11, zero action there because urease doesn't like that pH. Or if you go down to 3, there's zero, zero rate of enzyme action because urease doesn't like pH of 3. All right, guys, this is going to conclude these uh, notes. Make sure that you write uh, some questions on your question sections of your Cornell notes. Uh, if you need to ask me some of those questions, please do so. Also, uh, make sure that you write a summary on your summary section of your notes. Uh, always, always, always make sure that you fill these things out, all right? Uh, all right, you have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon again.